Hello, AP Calculus students. Just a record here talking about another example from Larson's ninth edition, chapter 5. We're in section 2 where we're talking about how to integrate forms of 1 over u. Um, our basic formula that we've been discussing is the fact that the integration of a form 1 over u where your du dx is present, all taken with respect to x, will be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Once again, if you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you've checked out some of the other videos or you've been working with some of these problems in your class. So example 9 is uh, my final example in the section. And it's, uh, it's a little bit more of an application type problem. But it also is a problem that opens the door for another kind of a function. It's called the logistic growth function that uh, students um, in, in my class will see in Chapter 6 of the, the Larson textbooks. Um, and it actually is a topic that um, is much more of a factor for students that are going to be taking the BC calculus exam. I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail about the logistic function. I'm just going to focus on, on the integration problem here at hand. And what we've got is a population growth uh, question here. A population of bacteria changes at a rate of dp over dt equaling 3,000, all divided by 1 plus 0.25t. t is the, the amount of uh, days, that is our time variable. The initial population at time 0 is 1,000. We want to write an equation that gives the population at any time t, and then later on find a specific population when time is 3. Now, Again, it's highly likely that you haven't really delved into solving a lot of differential equations. Uh, depending on the order of the textbook that you use, it's, it's, it's possible that you have. But it's not a really hard thing to do. And I'm going to take this problem. I'm just going to rewrite it if I could here so I can kind of point out some things with this. This is what's called a differential equation in calculus. Uh, makes a lot of sense. It is an equation with a derivative in it, hence a di differential equation. And what we want to do with these is to separate the variables that we see in the equation. We have obviously the variable p, and we have the variable t going on. So to separate those, we can easily accomplish that by multiplying both sides of this equation by the dt. Now, once this is done, all systems are go for our next step. And our next step, if you think about it logically here, is if we want to get an equation for population, we think about what variable is population. Well, it, population starts with the letter P. Hmm, I wonder if there's a chance. Exactly. It is the letter P. Now, notice that is not DP. Population will just be plain old P without that derivative type symbol in front of it. So we have to revisit our left side over here and think to ourselves, hmm, what would we, could we do to this DP to turn it into simply a P? And the answer, obviously, is whatever it takes to undo a derivative, which is an integration. So in a sense, we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. Notice the left side, we integrate with respect to P. The right side, we're going to integrate with respect to T. I'm going to partition my board here, and I'm going to work on this other half. If we take the integration of 1 times dP, or 1 with respect to P, all right, I put that 1 in there to emphasize. Well, think about what is it that we would get? And the answer is P. Okay. The derivative of P with respect to P is 1. So the integration of 1 with respect to p, it of course, would be p. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, oh, nope, you're wrong. What about the plus c? What about the plus constant? Well, we're going to wait on that guy, and I'll show you what we're going to do with him in a second in case you haven't already figured it out. Um, and I apologize. Yep, I did forget a p down here with that 0.25, so I wanted to take care of him before we move any further. And to continue with this, um, we might think about just momentarily the idea of a u substitution for this problem, because that's the kind of integration problem that we've got here. 
It's a problem where we could very easily let the denominator be our entire u, and we realize that we're going to only get a constant. We're only going to get, as our derivative of u, 0.25. And then I can just swing my dt over there. All right. Now what that means is, is that simply a constant in our derivative here can be offset very nicely. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this brand new integral. The 3,000 that we normally had here as our numerator, I'm going to bring him out to the front. And then I'm going to start to think about rewriting this interval. But notice this denominator here will serve as our 1 over u sort of form that we're going to have. But it's this 0.25 that's the culprit. That's the guy that we kind of wish we didn't have. Well, we can easily take care of him if we move him to the other side by way of a division. Now, another way to think about this is if you solve for dt so that you could implant that result in for this particular position of your integrand, you would have du divided by 0.25. All right, it's that 0.25 in the denominator that will then move out in front of the interval. Hopefully that makes sense. Integration of 1 over u du is all that's going to be left. And what we've got here is an integral that has the same meaning as the one that we started with below. Now you'll notice that 3 divided by 0.25 is the same as, well, three, I'm sorry, 3,000 divided by 0.25 is the same as 3,000 times 4. So we would have a 12,000 out in front. And then if we integrate the 1 over u form, we get natural log absolute value of u plus c. And then at which point, we could go ahead and back substitute our u. And if you recall, that was going to be 1 plus 0.25 times t. Now, let's talk about this plus c. You'll notice that I went ahead and put it into the right side. If there were a plus c on the left side, we could just suggest to that plus c that he moves himself to the right side. I'm not going to even for a moment assume that the two c's would cancel because they most likely wouldn't. So we would just go ahead and sort of absorb them into one another and have a single plus c. And that's done quite often in calculus. And what we've got here is sort of like our population function. It's just not a very specific population function because of this guy. The population could really be very, very different for certain time values based on what the c is. So what we've got to do is find that value of c. And if we go back and read some original text in our problem, we will see a piece here that says, when the time is zero, the population is 1,000. That is a very powerful piece of information that's going to enable us to find the value of c. Oftentimes, in many differential equations, you'll have this thing called an initial condition such as that. That's going to be your clue to find your constant c. So basically, we just use the fact that at t equals 0, p is equal to 1,000. All right, that does a lot of neat things for this problem. We would say then that 1,000, our population, would be 12,000 multiplied by the natural log of the absolute value. 1 plus 0.25 times 0 is just going to result in 1. The 0.25 would go away because it's being multiplied by 0, which is t. And then our plus c drops down. And then we would notice that, oh, this natural log of 1 that we see from time to time is going to become 0, which completely annihilates our 12,000. And it leaves us with a value of c of 1,000. So what that all means is our population function can then take on the form p, or you could say p of t. Well, it really doesn't make a big difference. But when you, when you write a function such as this as p of t equals, what's going on is that you are saying, um, I'm going to be a little bit more formal about this, and I want this function p to be in terms of something important, t, so I know what my independent variable is and my dependent variable is. So we're going to continue with this and go back 
And remember what our P function was. It was this 12,000 times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus 0.25t plus that c value that we found a moment ago to be a thousand. Okay, now that that's done, we're ready for our next step. We have our population function. We have actually answered the first part of our, of our question. Write the equation that gives the population. Now we want to, at any time t, now to find this population precisely when the time is 3, then we just simply plug 3 in for t. And we would have 12,000 times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus 0.75, all plus 1,000. And to do that, we're probably going to want to get a calculator. So, so we're going to go ahead and evaluate this then. Uh, we're going to use our calculator. So I brought up my TI Inspire software. So we're going to we're type, going to in, type in uh, 12,000 multiplied by the natural log of the, well, the absolute value was a part of our problem, but I think we could play it a little bit uh, on the rough side here and decide not to put the absolute values in. The reason being is that 1 plus 0.75 is definitely destined to be positive regardless. Plus 1,000. And I'm going to go ahead and use a control enter so that my final answer will be expressed as a decimal as that seems to be uh, sort of the context of the problem. We, we, we're talking about us being scientists, and we might have to make some type of a, of a round here. So 7,715.39, we could then say, would be our population. It doesn't really say where to round. Uh, if I look at that answer one more time, 7,715.39. Um, if this were sort of an, a true AP exam question, then I think we probably want that third decimal place. Uh, it's very easy to come by that. I can go up and highlight that answer and hit enter, and I can see all sorts of decimal places. Maybe going out to 389 would be sufficient uh, in that particular instance. So I might change that. But um, all truth be told, we're really talking about maybe the nearest amount of bacteria here, and that would answer our question that we had at the beginning that said, tell us what the population is at time 3. And that would be about 7,715 bacteria after day three. Hopefully this helps. Good luck to you.